great orange hunter stalks his prey. <laughs> ah, he sees it. The elusive loin of pork. The most prized catch in the Frigidari jungle. What's this? Elf, don't eat this. Why would I eat this? <laughs> Ever so deftly, the great orange hunter maneuvers his weapon. Once in position, he strikes! <laughs> what, go! Has the hunter angered the gods? Are you in here? He's not in the attic. Look at this mess. Alf! Alf! This was his first quake. Poor little fellow. He must be terrified. I found him. Alf, are you okay? He doesn't look it good. It looks like he's in shock. Alf, say something, anything. Armageddon, annihilation, white hot tentacles of doom spit fire, <laughs> venom, screeching, help me, help me, Alf. help me, help me, ruination, devastation, Alf. apocalypse now, now, now. <laughs> Thanks, Willie. Now I'm blind. Your eyes are closed. Oh. Here, let me help you. Oh, this may stagger your imagination a whit, but I had nothing to do with this mess. <laughs> We know, Ralph, we know. You do? We had an earthquake. I see. And it was a good one. What was good about it? Why do we have it? What was it? Well, let me see if I can explain it, Alf. You see, the crust of our planet is made of plates of layered rock that are in continual movement. Now, when the pressure beneath becomes too great, it's released Thank through... you, Mr. Wizard. <laughs> hey, the short strokes, please. Do you remember when Godzilla destroyed Tokyo? <laughs> well, that's a rather extreme example, Kate. Okay? Look, we, we just had an earthquake and we are all fine. We just have to remember to be prepared and follow some basic safety rules. Willie, get the ledger. Kate has more rules. <laughs> hey, Willie, is anybody home? Alf, get in the kitchen. Oh, uh, that is, stay in the kitchen. <laughs> uh, hi, Raquel. Willie, Jake. Kate, we had an earthquake. <sighs> so did we. <laughs> How's Lynn? Ellen's fine. Does she need comforting? And she's fine. Because if she does, she's I could... She's fine! I'm glad to hear it. So where's Trevor? On the porch. <laughs> Trevor, come on in. Is this structural? <laughs> Trevor, I, I've never seen you like this. <laughs> oh, 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 Trevor, it's, it's going to be all right. It, it, it's going to be all right. <laughs> Trevor, this is making me very uncomfortable. I'm sorry. I'm just traumatized. Well, we'll be on our way. We just wanted to make sure that you were okay. 
Say hi to Lynn and everybody for me. Trevor, you'll be fine. You think so? Of course. With the proper professional assistance. <laughs> Is this thing structural? <laughs> You know, in a way, that jolt we had last night was probably a very good thing. If you enjoyed it that much, why not just strap a lightning rod on your head and wander around in the rain? No, I think what Willie means is that it's reminding us to come out and check our supplies. It says here that we should have a half gallon of water a day for each of us. So for two weeks, that makes 35 gallons. Oh. Hey! Yeah. Uh... Hey, 35 gallons of water. Wait, I have questions. Why do we need so much bottled water? Well, that's in case our water supply becomes contaminated. What about food? We have a two-week supply of food. We have peanut butter, we have granola bars, evaporated milk, canned meat, fish. We had a two-week supply of peanut butter, granola bars, evaporated milk, canned meat, and fish. It was nowhere near a two-week supply. I ate it in 37 minutes. Alf, those were our survival rations. And I survived. Now you know they work. <laughs> we stock food stuff, padlock food stuffs. <laughs> I uh, saw the truck outside. I guess the extra water we ordered came. Oh, yes, water came. Last load. $476. I'm afraid uh, we didn't order this much water. You got a Gordon Shumway at this address? Just once, I was hoping that just once it might be a legitimate mistake. <laughs> so I don't suppose there's a chance you could take a couple dozen of these back. Let's pick up on delivery. Well, goodbye. Or as we like to say, au reservoir. <laughs> uh, what'll it be? Cup of soup? Cocoa with teeny marshmallows? Or maybe just the straight stuff straight up. <laughs> I know that look. I find it unsettling. Alf! Oh, hi, Willie. What are you doing? Hammering. Could you be a little more specific? Hammering nails. <laughs> Why are you nailing your bed to the floor? Well, it wouldn't make much sense to scotch tape it now, would it? <laughs> Alf, nailing your bed down isn't gonna help you during an earthquake. It'll keep me from sliding down the stairs. Then I'm running a bumper around the bed for shock absorption. And underneath, in case of a tidal wave, pontoons. <laughs> I'm telling you, Willie, this bed is going to be the safest place in the house. Alf, I really don't... I know what you're going to say, and I could put you in one of these babies for $99.95. Yes, that's $99.95. Ah! Ah! Alf, it's an aftershock. Come into the doorway. I'll be safer in here. Ah! Two seconds later and I would have had the weight of the world where my head used to be. No, Alf, that, that, that's only a globe. That wouldn't have hurt you. Don't you see, Willie? It's a sign. No matter what you do, no matter how many precautions you take, sooner or later, this planet is gonna get you. Oh, take it easy, Alf. You'll be fine. Yeah, but for how long? Face it, Willie. Earth is hazardous to your health. <laughs> I 
know this is hard for you to understand, Bright. It's hard for me to understand, too. Sometimes it's Bert Convy, sometimes it's Vicki Lawrence, sometimes it's Sally Struthers. But no matter who hosts, it's always win, lose, or draw. <laughs> That's a load off my mind. It's me, Jake! It's open. Hi, guys. Morning, Jake. Hi. Hi. Hi, Jake. So how did your Uncle Trevor handle that aftershock last night? <laughs> Not too well. He started sleeping in the doorway. Oh, that's just silly. I know, but at least he wakes up with the morning paper handy. <laughs> Willie, just let me look at you. Kate. Funny, special Kate. <laughs> Lynn, why, why, you're a woman now. Brian, is this the little boy I carried? <laughs> and Jake, what is a friend? A friend is Jake. <laughs> Let's all just be. Does you want to stay for breakfast, Jack? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Ah, uh, the complex parade that is life. Alf, is this something we should be asking you about? It's simple, oh my Willie. Last night's narrowly averted tragedy gave me pause. I thought you already had pause. Uh, ha, 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 ha. Witty, urbane Lynn. What I meant was, it gave me pause to think. I've been trying to escape my fate, but there is no escape. If an earthquake doesn't get me, a monsoon might, or an avalanche, or a firestorm, or food poisoning. What is your point? My point is, any breath I draw could be my last. So I'm going to savor every moment I have left. There goes one now. What's wrong with Alf? Nothing's wrong with me. I've simply adopted a new philosophy. Eat, drink, and be merry. For tomorrow we croak. Tomorrow? It's just an expression, Brian, albeit a mangled one. Are you sure you're all right, Alf? I'm fine. In fact, I'm perfect. Come on, everyone. Let's all join hands for a chorus of kumbaya. <laughs> Mais ce que je voudrais faire est le mise en scène. I should have stuck with Latin. <sighs> Linnocence, my lovely flower of spring. Seeing you brings a lump to my throat. Not unlike a goiter. Alf, that's gross. Or write a bunion. <laughs> I really don't have time for this. I've got to learn this French, plus I've got a history final tomorrow. History is history! <laughs> What's important is today, now, this moment. Savor, Lynn. Look, Alf, if I don't study today, I'll be savoring failure about 9.45 tomorrow morning. <laughs> How many Templars will it take for you to see the light? We've only had two. Well... Perhaps I'm more introspective than you. Lynn, take a tip. Be here now. You take a tip. Be gone now. I take my leave. If you need me, I'll be out with God watching Brian grow. Right. Oh, and Lynn, I love you. <laughs> what if I talk that into moving someplace where it's safe? Like where? I don't know. Kansas? You could be blown away by a tornado. How about Hawaii? The volcanoes will get you. Canada? Blizzards. Florida? Old age! <laughs> Brian, live, because 
sooner or later. <laughs> Alf. Hey, Alf. Brian. Oh, Jake. Jake, less than a brother, more than a friend. Have you been saving? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been savoring life left and right. <laughs> That's good. Because life is like death row. And every day you live is a stay of execution. Until the one day when the big governor in the sky doesn't make that phone call. I think I'll go inside for a while. OK, B. Hey, savor your parents for me. Oh, and Brian. What? I love you. <laughs> Don't you think you might be scaring the kid? Scaring him? I'm teaching him how to enjoy life. Have it your way. Oh, Jake, in case this is the last time we see each other... Will you cut out all this last time stuff? I'm just going home. What's gonna happen to me there? Well, you could slip in the tub, choke on your dinner, fall down the stairs, trip over the dog, accidentally flush yourself I'll down... come back when you're in a better mood. Oh, hey, Jake, I love you. And I mean that. Truly. Brian? Hi, Dad. Brian? I'm under here. We've been looking all over for you. What are you doing under the bed? This is where I live now. What? This way, if anything happens, I'll be safe. Safe from what? Oh, everything. It's no good keeping things like this inside. If something's bothering you, it's important to, to tell somebody about it. I agree, honey. Hi, right, Kate. But why are you talking to Brian's bed? <laughs> Hi, Mom. Bry? Bry, what are you doing under there? It's the only place he feels safe. Brian? Wh why are you so frightened? Because tomorrow we croak. Why does that sound familiar? Listen, Brian, uh, none of us is going to croak for a long, long time. You can't be sure. No, but I can be almost sure. And I'll tell you something I am sure of. If you spend your whole life worrying about all the bad things that could happen, you're going to miss all the good things that will happen. Oh, there you guys are. I want to savor you. Oh, good, good. You can start with Brian. He's under the bed. What's he doing under there? Have you ever heard of catastrophic expectations? Of course. It's a Melmacian dating service. <laughs> no, Alf, catastrophic expectations means you live your life fearing the worst. So? So that's exactly what you've been doing. Hey, if you've got a good thing going, I say stick with it. We don't care if you stick with it, but you're scaring Brian. Oh, he's savoring dust bunnies. <laughs> Come on out, B. I'm not coming out. I'm never coming out. Whoa, ho, ho. extreme. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with living cautiously. But if you spend each day focusing on mortality, each day a little piece of you is going to experience that mortality. Do you understand me, Alf? No. I do. You mean don't be scared of stuff until it happens. Gee, Willie, why didn't you say that? I thought I did. All I want to know is, does this leave room for savoring? Of course it does, Alf. Just savor life out of joy, not out of fear. So what you're saying is, we should eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we eat, drink, and be merry again. <laughs> Let's try eat, drink, and clean up anything you spill. <laughs> Why don't you come out from under the bed, Bry? What? Feeling better? A little. Hey, sorry if I scared you, B. No problem. Uh, you wouldn't want to... The helmet stays. Uh, I thought you were delivery, not pickup. 
I got a promotion. Just my luck, huh? Well, uh, I guess this covers the delivery and the uh, 35 gallons we are keeping uh, uh, and the pickup. You throw a little something in here for my chiropractor? <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, thanks for everything. Hey, is all my water gone? Yes, thankfully. Well, it's too bad. I had a great idea. Want to hear about it? Not especially. Fine. But without the water slide, I don't think Tannerland is going to catch on. 